has been quite a while, hasn't it? And uh, I don't really know how to start this video either by saying that I got a job, except I am now an essential worker and I don't have as much time to record and to sew and to plan projects. However, I have money now. <laughs> okay. So if you have followed my channel or have seen some of my recent videos, you would know that The Little Mermaid is a pretty big deal to me. In fact, right before the stay-at-home order happened, I got Hans Christian Andersen's classic fairy tales from Barnes & Noble, and I have just been so happy, even though some of the translations I don't necessarily agree with because, uh, well, let me explain. When I read The Little Mermaid, like the actual fairy tale the first time, I got it off of a website. And I just really loved this version better because it felt a little bit more archaic and a bit more genuine, whereas this one really translated as kind of more like, I was about to say kid friendly, but it's more like present day friendly. So like anybody could understand it in this type of translation, but if you want more of a historical feel or I really don't want to insult anybody's intelligence. But what I mean to say is that there are many, many kinds of translations of The Little Mermaid and I just agreed more with this one, I found this one more entertaining than this one, and that's okay. And the reason I'm saying all of this is because I am planning a new sewing project and it is going to make me tackle a whole new decade that I never thought that I would try to conquer before, and that is the 1830s. More specifically, 1836, because that is when The Little Mermaid was written. And now that I have money, I can go all out. And for this video, I am starting with the crinoline. And that is going to involve, at least I think, because uh, the pattern that I found was kind of confusing, I just got five yards of this kind of cotton, which I will link in the description below, and cording. Just to give you context, I ordered these from Great Lakes Cording, I believe it was called, on Amazon, and this was shipped from the actual company in like just saran wrap. It was like this, and you have to think like the male person must have been like, why is this woman ordering like 20, 30 yards of cord? But like that's fine. But this one, Amazon shipped in like a bag in which you couldn't, it was like a big envelope where you like, you didn't know what it was and you can clearly see the difference. They basically italicized my cord. <laughs> but yes, in the 1830s, corded petticoats were a thing and I am going to try to make one today. And this is gonna be fun. Also, just to give you a sneak peek of the dress that I am going to make, this is going to be the outside fabric, and this is going to be the lining. And I really hope I made the right choice because this was my first time ordering fabric online. All right, this is just exciting. Okay, let's go. All right, I'm going to explain the math part to you guys, and I know that it's scary, but I just did something that basically boggled my mind, and I'm so glad that I did it, okay? so. So the pattern is basically squares. Now luckily, this is cut at a width of like 45 inches, I believe. Um, the pattern said 45 or 46, so I'm like, we're good. But I need to cut them into squares and have it be the length of my waist to my ankle. And I need four panels of it because um, that's how like the cord is gonna be looped. We're gonna sew these two fabrics together and basically sew the cord, or, like sew around the cord so that way it acts like a sort of boning channel in a way. I ordered five yards, totally forgetting why I ordered five yards, and that was because if I need squares of 45 by 38, which is what I measured, I'm gonna need 38, 38, 38, 38, so that way it's like two panels here, two panels there, so it's like it's 25 inches at the, like, across here, and then 48 inch length. <sighs> Why did I start sewing? I'm bad at math. But anyway, 38 times four is plenty when you're dealing with 180 inches of fabric. So, that's five yards, by the way. It's just, sorry. My autistic mind has ways of going around numbers, and this is just how I do it. 
and it works for me even though it's so <laughs> badly well-rounded so um, I just measured 38 and then another 38 and then I'm gonna cut across here as I just did so that way I don't necessarily have to cut My niece is over, sorry. Instead of cutting four squares and sewing them all together, I am just going to loop it around to save a little bit of time, and that way I only have to work with two panels instead. And that way it will work as like a good circle, and then I can start sewing the cords in and all will be well. Okay, so in summary, 45 width, and then a 36 length. Cut two pieces, you good? And then you will have fabric left over for a waistband or whatever you plan on doing else with this fabric. Okay, <laughs> that took way longer than it had to be, but it helped me visualize it and hopefully I helped you as well. I honestly have to apologize for all the discrepancies that I make in this video because I just don't have the mental capacity to handle math very well. But the first step was exactly what I said. I measured the length between my waist and the floor, which ended up being 38. I doubled that and then cut the fabric as such. Okay, so after sewing the two sheets together lengthwise, I flipped them inside of each other so that way it created a sort of loop. So that way this is supposed to be the actual crinoline, except it just doesn't have the cording in it. Now that we have our petticoat in a continuous circle, it's time to put the cording in. And this will involve creating several rows of cord within it. So basically between the lining fabric and the outside fabric, we have to seek this in there and then push it all the way down and sew along there with like some kind of zipper front. And um, it just involves, well, according to my map, uh, my map, <laughs> whatever, you need to sew four rows of 10 by 32 inch cord, which is this, and then four inch gap, and then eight rows of four by 32 inch cord, and then four inches of space, and so on and so forth, just following the pattern that was written out. And again, I will link the video in the description box below. But honestly, um, I'm kind of scared at this point because I'm afraid that I'm going to make it very crooked or lopsided, but um, I just need to find a way to make this even. And I'm not quite sure if pinning is going to do it, but we'll try it anyway. I pinned the first couple sections of cording together underneath the fabric, so that way it would be much easier to sew with the zipper foot. Now, even though that this was very time consuming and it strained my hands a lot, it was a very good idea because it built a sort of foundation for the garment. So that way the crinoline was already taking shape and then I could use less pins later on and just kind of freestyle it and tuck it under as I go. Now the key to sewing the lines of cording within the two layers of fabric is that you need to make sure that the fabric is smooth both below and above the cording. As you're sewing, your goal is to sew as close to the cording as possible with the zipper foot. But also try not to tug the fabric as much, just make sure that it's smooth above and below it, because that way you're going to prevent puckers. Alright, so I just finished the first line of cording and uh, I just realized something. I cut each cord to be 91 inches and then I trimmed them, like once I like tucked it in and pinned everything, I matched it up together and then I trimmed it to how I want it to be. So. The extra inch was like just for safety and I just cut it so that's all good. But I just did a little math and the pattern said that I needed 10 to 20 yards of 10 by 32 inch cord. And But when I did the math, I only needed four rows of that particular cord. So four times 91 is 364 divided by how much a yard is, 12 times three, I only needed 10.11 repeating yards. So, I know that I, I mean, I bought 20 yards just because that's how it came in, but like, what am I gonna do with all that extra cord? And then it gets worse because I have to do 28 yards of 4 by 32 inch cord and that turns out to be 28 times 91 
divided by a yard, and I needed 7.7 .7 repeating yards, and I ordered 90. <laughs> I am, <laughs> what am I gonna do? I can go boating. <laughs> well, I don't know. You never know when you're gonna need rope, right? <laughs> Anyway, I'm really impressed how this has already taken shape, and I am going to take a break, and um, yeah, all is going to be well. I'm honestly glad that I cut the cording to fit the circumference of the crinoline plus an inch just for safety, because that way I didn't have to handle so much bulk and stress when slipping the cording inside. But the hardest part was yet to come, because I had to sew a straight line to begin the next row of cording. I followed the pattern and measured four inches above the first row of cording and then pinned where the line needed to be. Then I kind of just eyeballed it as I sewed. Or you could draw a line like a smart person, but I didn't want it to show. I didn't trust myself. FYI, as I was measuring and cutting out the rope, this shit happened. So yeah, thanks Amazon. This is where the project gets kind of repetitive because it's just a matter of sewing in the lines of cording and then measuring a gap and then sewing a straight line and then starting the next rows of cording until you're done. Just follow the pattern that is provided by American Duchess, which again, I will link in the description box below. Newsflash, so I am in the middle of what every sewer dreads and that is that I'm running out of thread. Good news, I made it just in time, except uh, I'm going to have to buy more thread. Well, I mean, look on the bright side. I mean, if you mess up, at least all the cord is smushed up where you want it to and you've already <laughs> like sewed with your needle that line where you're supposed to go. So look on the bright side. I mean, my hands fucking hurt. A little bit of an update. I just got done with the second row, but I have discovered something. So I got some more thread from the basement and never have I been so determined to sew a straight line, but I have discovered something. So this is all fine and good. And even on the other side, it's like pretty straightforward, but the more you go down, the less flat it goes and the more puckered it seems. And that's all because I realized at some point as I was sewing in the cords, uh, I did a little bit of little bit of overlap and it had become sort of like a mudslide in a way. Right now I'm debating on either taking a break and just letting it happen, but then again I'm thinking if it's gonna act like this, it might happen later on in the project. So I might just redo that and flatten it out some more and try to find a way to prevent this from happening again. I just got home from work and I have a kick-ass reason to be excited today. I have wanted a red threaded corset ever since I discovered them and years later I'm making money and now I have a foundation garment that's actually good. I have two corsets already from Orchard Corset, but I really wanted to make this as historically accurate as possible, and I am... I'm excited! I also got their lobster tail crinoline, which is not for this project, but it's a sneak peek for the one I have in mind next time. Seriously, it just feels so good making money and I can afford things I love. It is day, I'm not quite sure, but I am practically half done with inserting all the piping in and uh, right now I can tell you that my least favorite part is starting a new line because there is so much pressure to just sew a straight line all the way across and not have this much gathering or puckering happening right here. Like, I just can't really prevent it, but I have been really really good i've gotten really good at actually making so all of these lines are just perfectly right there instead of like down here where a little bit of gathering got a little bit too underway and then it became so flat but the other ones are quite good so i guess i am just going to take a break and uh <laughs> right now i am definitely feeling as if i am a crazy person for even wanting to attempt to make this but i am feeling a sense of accomplishment and i have gotten really good at a uh, i've stopped pinning the cords now i just tuck it in as close as i can and then i smooth the fabric over and under it and then keep sewing along and each line is averaging about like 18 minutes per cord so it's just very time consuming and my hands kind of hurt afterwards but 
I am feeling quite good about this. I highly encourage you to change outfits throughout a lot of this process and to change your hair as well because you went out on a date yesterday and... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's it's morning now and nobody's in the house for like the first time in forever and I'm just like Yay, I can record and nobody can like <laughs> say anything except maybe my neighbors Um, well anyway, I am at the point in which I'm like uh, uh, I'm tired all the fucking time <laughs> Like this thing is really starting to take shape when I hold it up, but like the problem is that I think I have three more rows to do, and then I have to worry about the top situation and like the waistband and stuff, and I have extra fabric for that. But I think the thing that I'm hating myself more is this section, because look at all this like fabric that's just randomly tugged over there, and then I had to tug it over here to loosen it up. And then I get little puckers, if you can see, like this around the cording, and I have no idea if that's gonna affect anything, because that was just me trying to save the fabric and like, even everything out and then this is what I hate the most so like you see where the cord ends but it's not that bad as long as they're more center but then the last row I did ah, I'm just really annoyed and I can only hope that all the other cording is gonna make that like disappear almost and this is why it's important to take breaks because I am like ah, <laughs> I'm mad at myself for not being patient enough to like want to go back and like try it again but anyway that's where i am right now sorry and uh i gotta go to work soon you know what this is like another reason why i don't sell on etsy and it's because i i just have too many imperfections and i don't have a serger but there are ways around that right and speaking of undergarment, I, uh, spoiled myself a little bit more supporting Red Threaded, and whoa. And ta-da, I am ready to tackle the 18th century, or join a production of Hamilton. I also got a stomacher. Yeah, so this is what you get when you mix 1830s hairstyles with my taste in music. Yeah, I feel alright. <laughs> so I recently went to a couple of antique shops. I found something that is quite crucial to one of the projects that I'm planning on doing next. Daddy, what is it? I was like, this is pretty. <laughs> Can you imagine me walking around in the park like this? I would honestly do that if only I had the self-confidence, like whenever I go to the Renfest and I can wear whatever I want and no one can tell me shit. But in time, I did get really good at using my fingers as a guide to push the corning through and also smooth the fabric over it. But it had gotten to the point where the fabric became too bulky on one side, so I had to flip it over and sew on the other side so that way the cords would hang along the side of the sewing machine. But then you had to worry about gravity because it kept tugging it down and... This project is so strenuous, I'm not kidding. Once all the rows according were sewed in, I cut off the excess fabric on the top of the petticoat and that ended up being my waistband. I cut the waistband to be the width of 2.5 inches and then the length was the size of my waist plus one and a half inches. I didn't film this part, but I folded the waistband hot dog style and then ironed it flat. Now I know that the person in the tutorial I followed didn't like this idea, but I did just cut a slit down the center back of the petticoat, about 7 to 8 inches, and then I folded the edges underneath itself and sewed it along. Don't worry too much about there being a hole in the back because I designed the waistband to overlap it a little bit so that way we don't have to worry about it. Oh yeah, I failed to mention I measured my corseted waist, not my natural waist when cutting out the waistband. Sorry! After finishing the edges of the waistband, I gathered the top of the petticoat. Now the tutorial says that you should cut the bottom layer of fabric after the last row of cording, so that way you only have to deal with one layer of fabric, but I decided not to do that. I don't know why, but I actually kind of liked it this way anyway. So here's the thing, I did a gathering stitch all the way around, and then I left um, the left side equal and then that was where the button is going to be and then this is where the hole will be so that way i can just latch it on and then it's like there's a little bit of coverage there so that way it'll cover up that hole that i was worried about but <laughs> i'm terrible at sewing <laughs> over gathered lines because i always ended up showing that line but now that i repinned everything hopefully i will catch all the fabric that i failed to do the first time but you know what it's good that i took some time because you know what i was like oh my god i gotta fix this right now but then, 
I thought to myself, <laughs> easy tiger. <laughs> now you better laugh at that joke because that joke costs like 46 bucks. I usually don't pay that much for clothing, but I saw the opportunity for a pun and I took it. After re-sewing the waistband on, I cut off the excess fabric. Now, the buttonhole. <sighs> I got some flat, clear buttons from Joann's, and the reason I chose these kind of buttons were because, well, it's a crinoline. No one's gonna see it. But I just wanted to be as flat as possible, and actually, creating the buttonhole and sewing on the button was the easiest part of this project. Now that the button's sewn on, I am done! I'm incredibly proud of myself, but... There is one more thing I have to do if I want to try this on correctly. In case you're interested in seeing the tomfoolery I have to put myself in. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Quite flattering, I know. But, uh... Insert I can't breathe joke here. Now if you are one of the brave special souls that actually knows <laughs> what is actually supposed to be under this, um, the answer is I'm not making it. I actually ordered it on Etsy, but it's stuck in Ukraine right now. Uh, but the one that I'm buying or am, I mean, I did buy, but the one that I'm expecting to come to my house, uh, I'll link it in the description below. I also bought just a plain petticoat and some bloomers because I wasn't quite sure if bloomers existed at that time from like what I researched. There was like a, it was sort of a transition, uh, but I just bought it anyway just to see whether or not it is actually right. Why can't I tie this? I'm still kind of breaking into this, but um, when I uh, warmed up to it up to this point, I set it so that the skirt will fit like a 25 inch waist, which that's still like quite comfortable on me. So let us see. Yep, that was expected. <laughs> so many days. So many hours, so many weeks, and it's gone up to this, and I'm like, <laughs> I feel crazy. I feel crazy that I did this. You know, like the fact that the cords are like sinking in on other places and then not on the other, that's kind of expected, but at least once the petticoat comes in, it's gonna be way more smooth, and I won't have to worry about it. It does feel kind of weird though. This is like, I can see why this only lasted for like, what, two decades? And then steel bones came into play, is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So if you are still here, thank you so much for watching this video. I know I was one of those crazy people that actually attempted to do this, and now that I've done it, I'm actually quite happy. Except now it's like, I feel like I keep having to kick it because it wants to touch my thighs. Yeah, you probably want to see how much fabric was actually lost during that process with like all the cording and stuff. So. I cut the fabric so it touched all the way down to the floor and then it lost about uh, however that much is so like <laughs> now you know ah. but this is actually gonna be part one of my 1830 series because the dress is still to come and I'm really excited about that well there we are my name's Kaylee thank you for watching subscribe if you want and I shall see you in my next sewing adventure I am faced with a new problem. Uh, where, or how am I gonna store this? Editor Kaylee here, here to inform you that a major pro to having a corded petticoat is that it is easily foldable. And quite appropriate for this project, I have added a who's it to my collection of what's it's and gizmos and gadgets and thingamabobs. <laughs> you look great, kid. You look sensational. See you in my next sewing adventure.